Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Tenani. Thank you for your comments and feedback on YouTube. It's always great to hear from the listeners. Last time, I gave a brief introduction to gang stalking. I went over the types of stalkers and gave some tips on how to handle gang stalker incidents. There was also some TI lingo for the newly initiated and general public. The only vocabulary word for this week is perps. P-E-R-P-S. Perps. Perps is another name that TIs use for gang stalkers. It's just a shorter way of saying perpetrators. I will use gang stalkers and perps interchangeably. Got it? Good. Let's get started. Now it's time for FYI essential information for TIs. Gang stalkers want the TI to believe that they have infiltrated every portion of the TI's life. Wherever the TI goes, gang stalkers are sure to follow. It's an illusion of omnipresence that is meant to disturb the TI. You're about to receive some information on how to handle this right now. Oh my goodness, they're everywhere! Or, so they want you to believe, TIs probably see a different gang stalker everywhere they go. How do the perps do it? Is there really so many of them? Fortunately, no. The gang stalking units are not as big as it seems. Here's how the perps give an illusion of omnipresence. When a campaign first begins, a TI may notice a few gang stalkers here and there. But as the TI becomes more aware of the campaign, it seems like everybody is a gang stalker. Especially if the TI's family, acquaintances, and friends are participating. A TI needs to stop take a deep breath and a better look at his or her surroundings. While the gang stalking units may have grown since the beginning of the campaign, the TI's awareness has grown more. Remember that the perps are trying to induce paranoia or another kind of mental illness. When people go out, they normally have a narrow focus of their environment. They usually just focus on what they want to do and a few interesting things in their environment. Usually, a TI's focus becomes on what they want to accomplish and watching out for the perps. A TI has to keep track of the perps. That's not a bad thing, except when it starts to support the illusion of omnipresence. The perps often use and attempt to sensitize TIs to signals that blend into everyday life. So, a TI may notice every time someone coughs or blows a horn, if those are the signals used in the campaign. The wise TI will learn how to identify identify when a perp coughs and when a member of the audience coughs. It's pretty easy when you brainstorm ways of telling the difference. Here's a hint. It's pretty obvious when someone is doing something to get your attention as opposed to doing it naturally. So, try to look without looking. If the perps want your attention, make them work. <laughs> there are many ways to do this. Figure out a way. Remember what life was like before this nightmare? Now, go through the timeline up to the present. What you may notice is that at first, there were only a few perps. Then, when they got your attention, they kicked it up a notch. As you started to react, there were more of them, and so on and so on, until it seemed as if your life was infested with gang stalkers. Besides your awareness growing, here is what was probably happening at their end. They started to recruit people in your area, but not everyone they approach is going to participate, so they get current stalkers to travel to your area. It's not necessarily that the perps are growing in number, but that they are surrounding you and trying to command your attention so that all you see is them. There is a difference. They may have grown in number, but it's probably not as much as you think. They just moved their people around you. If they were growing that quickly, you would see more than a handful of them at the grocery store or wherever you go, and honestly, they would have taken over by now. The trick is that they just learned your routine and made sure that the existing members are around when you are, so it appears like they are everywhere. Want a visual explanation? Take a bag of M&Ms and empty it on a table or plate. Pick one color to represent the TI. Remove all of the same color except one. I'll use yellow to represent the TI and red to represent the stalkers. Don't remove any reds. Now, in the random drop, you will probably see only a few or no reds around the yellow. Now let's say that the TI is starting to notice the perps. 
Move the nearest red M&Ms closer to the yellow. Don't move any red M&Ms that were already near the TI. Now, the TI is starting to realize that there is a campaign against him or her. Move the yellow to a corner away from the other colors. Move three new red M&Ms near the yellow. Also, move the first two closer, but not as close as the other reds. Now, move the other red M&Ms closer one by one until most of them are surrounding the yellow. Notice the number of red never change, but simply more of them are surrounding the yellow. Now, move the yellow around, but always move at least three red wherever the yellow is. Now guide the yellow and the accompanying red in an area with the red M&Ms that you have not moved. Okay, from the yellow M&Ms perspective, it seems like the reds are everywhere. However, from the outside, you see that the reds just formed a barricade around the yellow. There is still a normal life outside the barricade. You get the big picture? Basically, their creepy presence is magnified by your growing awareness. If you think that someone is going to hurt you, it is only natural that you always want to know where that person is. It's a good thing. Keep an eye on those perps, but learn to do so in a way that helps, not hurts you. In a way that decreases your anxiety, not elevates it. They want to elevate your anxiety level and keep you hypervigilant. Being hypervigilant is not a bad thing. It's the hyper anxiety that impairs you. You can be hypervigilant without the anxiety factor. Figure out how. I know you can. Try this. Suddenly change your routine and notice that there is a delay in perp appearances. If they were omnipresent and had so many members, there would be no delay. It's important for TIs to realize this and not buy into the stalker's illusion of omnipresence. The perps may hear this suggestion and try to prevent the delay, but it would be interesting to see if they can and for how long. Another thing that TIs notice is that they could be alone, then suddenly there's a stalker following them at close range or standing right next to them. Again, another trick. There are many ways that the perps achieve this, but here are some ways to give you an idea of what is happening. If they know your routine, it's all a matter of hiding somewhere you can't see them, then suddenly appearing when you are close. You've done this to your sibling or childhood friend. Another perp may also distract you so that you don't notice the hiding perp or the perp that's creeping up on you. In the case of walking, the perp may have been sitting in a car or were dropped off and just starts walking as if he or she was always walking behind you. Remember that they want you to look for them all over the place and not know when or where they'll show up. So, while you are looking everywhere, hypervigilance mixed with hyperanxiety, they just have to sit and wait until your focus is somewhere else and surprise you. There are varying levels of stalking skills within the gang stalking groups. Some are better than others. Look, the perps are hypervigilant and probably hyperanxious too. They're doing something illegal and wrong. They have to watch you closely because they need to predict your next move to execute their next move. Among other things, they have to keep track of you, listen for instructions from other stalkers or by phone, and watch the audience in order to do things in a way that the audience can't blame them. I'm sure you can think of many ways to stay safe while using that information to your advantage. If you have essential information for TIs, please email protectlifenow at yahoo.com. TIs, it's time to know thy enemy. information comes from multistalkervictims.org that's multistalkervictims all one word dot org this site is helpful for learning more about the gang stalking crime you can find the following information on page 34 of their information handling guide the strong likelihood of decoying 
The perps will try to decoy you into believing things about them, apparently so that you will make crazy sounding statements to others and or do something discrediting in public and or waste your time, strength, money, and hope on useless countermeasures. The perpetrators consistently try to clock targets into blaming either the wrong technology or the wrong people or both. This is a subtask of their attempting to get targets to discredit themselves by making nonsensical or unsupportable claims to the public and especially officials. Their long-term goals would be to convince you that you had the ability to identify the true source of your attacks. The perps would hope that in a later situation, your confidence in your ability to identify the true source would cause you to complain to police about an innocent person. The perps are highly sophisticated, never forget that. They are not just thugs operating at the high school prank level. I have heard loud bird noises emanating from large windowless solid masonry walls. Clearly, the perps are capable of generating noise which seem to come from a neighbor's home or apartment, but in fact, it is artificially generated. I have learned that this type of decoying is a reoccurring form of harassment, and that if I do refer to such activities to others, I must use the speaking style and demeanor used by professionals during public speaking, and use qualifiers such as seems or appears to. Here's an example to illustrate the point. A campaign involves the honking of car horns. So a TI is walking down the street and always hears honks or a chorus of car horns. This signal serves many purposes. Some are to alert the other stalkers that a TI is in the vicinity, let the TI know that gang stalkers are in the vicinity, and to sensitize the TI to car horns. Another purpose is that car honking can be pretty common. In. By using this signal, the gang stalkers can get the audience to unknowingly participate in the campaign. A decoy that gang stalkers like to use is to deliberately stall when a red light turns green so that other cars can honk. This can also serve many purposes, such as give an excuse for honking in case a TI insists that it was a gang stalking signal. It makes a TI's claim seem ridiculous and paranoid. Or to get the audience involuntarily involved in the campaign. Most people would beep to get the car to move. This makes the gang stalking group look bigger than it really is. In reality, there may be only one or two gang stalkers driving, but if the audience beeps and this leads to more beeping by other members of the audience, a TI who is unaware of the decoy may think that the whole lane of cars are gang stalkers. There's a comment on one of the YouTube videos for the first episode that states that gang stalkers use everyday signals to sensitize TIs. This goes back to attempting to drive the TIs crazy. Imagine being sensitized to car horns and associating that with the trauma of being stalked. Car horns are not something that someone can escape. If the TI allows him or herself to become sensitized, she or he will be mentally disturbed every time she or he hears a car horn. Gang stalkers do this deliberately to cause the targets to develop mental illnesses. In addition, if a TI is trying to collect evidence, this decoy might cause the TI to get the wrong license plate number. Picture this. A TI is trying to collect evidence. That's it. I'm going to let these jerks have it. I've had about enough. But gets the wrong license plate number and accuses a bystander of being a gang stalker. Listen, jerk, I got your license plate number. I'm sick and tired of you perps. You can take your car beeping and go to- what? I don't know what you're talking about. You need because to- Because the honking came from the bystander's car. But it was the gang stalker who deliberately stalled in front of the bystander's car in order to make the other cars honk their horns. The audience is now involved in a conflict with the TI. Two innocent people are having problems for no reason. The gang stalkers are laughing. 
<laughs> while enjoying the scene. It's a game of let you and him fight. A gang stalker may even have the audacity to come over and try to help the situation. Is everything okay here? Can I help? The gang stalker will take the audience's side. Ma'am, please let me help. You're overreacting. You accused this person when she was just beeping because the other car wasn't moving. You, you need to mind your own business. You don't even know what's going on. And make the audience think that the T.I. is crazy. Is she crazy? I think that one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Then the gang stalker will let the T.I. know she or he is the real gang stalker by giving the signal. <coughs> I'm sorry, um, excuse me. And the T.I. who is already agitated will rightfully accuse the gang stalker. Oh, <laughs> so you're one of them too, huh? Well, isn't this great? I got two gang stalkers to deal with? What is this? Of being a gang stalker. But, of course, the gang stalker denies this. Listen, ma'am, ma'am, I have no idea what you're talking about. What is a gang stalker? I don't know what she's talking about. Do you know what she's talking about? And continues to try to get the audience, who doesn't know what's going on, to believe that the T.I. is crazy. I don't mean to be rude, but she's not in her right mind. She is acting strange. Yeah. She's crazy. Let's get out of here before she completely loses it. The T.I. is left with no help. And the gang stalker just made a new friend and potential new recruit. I'm not crazy! I'm sick and tired of this! Why don't you people just leave me alone? Just leave me alone! It's a devious, confusing tactic. But that's just one scenario of what happens to TIs. Gang stalkers deliberately use this tactic to try to destroy someone else's life. So you force into a system of unwanted pursuit? Here's a survival tip. This tip follows the FYI theme, but has two steps. The first step, notice how many people are not gang stalkers. Notice that these gang stalking units are not as big as they want you to believe. If they were, humans would probably be extinct by now. The second step, take note that the perps have figured out how to get your attention and are using that same technique over and over again. You know the song and dance by now. Switch it up a bit. Make them work. Some TIs have reported that there is something about most gang stalkers that gives them away. A creep factor, I suppose. Figure out how to distinguish the perps from the general public and you will become better able to neutralize gang stalking incidents. Even if the perps use everyday signals, it is possible to tell them apart from the general public. Remember that the reason why perps use common signals is to make them look as if there are more people involved than there really are. It's to throw you off. I propose that TIs and others who are against gang stalking adopt a yawning signal for perps. Why? because we are tired of gang stalking and this whole gang stalking thing is tired and it's time to wake up america try it and <laughs> send your feedback to protect life now at yahoo.com ladies and gentlemen please find your seats and turn off or mute your cell phones pagers and beepers the show is about to begin. This street theater comes from Stanford, Connecticut. During the winter, I had a regular stalker during my commute. She usually just watched me on the train's platform and occasionally tried to bump into me to make her presence known. One day, I found a seat in a small space on the train. She found me, but instead of sitting in the available, comfortable seat that had plenty of leg room, she squeezed herself into the tiny space across from me. She was a well-dressed female in her early 30s, and she looked and behaved as if she had some class, I guess. She sat by quietly for most of the trip and just condescendingly eyed me while pretending to do something else. Nothing eventful happened for most of the trip. Then she sneezed. <laughs> She excused herself and reached into her designer bag. She pulled out a big roll of toilet tissue 
began to roll it around four fingers. Blew her nose, then daintily placed the roll back into her designer bag. <laughs> really classy. Listen, I wipe my nose with toilet tissue when I'm at home or in the bathroom. But to pull out a big roll of Charmin during a busy commute on the train is something else. That's something else. When her stop came, she glanced at me with her nose up in the air and walked off the train. <laughs> Normal people usually just carry around a pack of Kleenex. I guess a pack of Kleenex wasn't good enough for her. She really thought she was the f Now it's time for TI News. I'm always looking for news stories about stalking, especially gang stalking. So if you find a news story that appeared in an official news source, please email it to protectlifenow at yahoo.com. So here's the news for today. This news story comes from New York, New York. Google Sherry Bender, heroin in the NYC corrupt court system to watch the video and hear Bender's story. Here's a brief. Sherry Bender, a New York City lawyer, was confronted with the quality of life situation when a bar that was located on one side of her apartment made it difficult for her to live comfortably in her apartment. She found out that the bar was illegally zoned and sought legal remedies for the problem. However, she tried to compromise with the bar owners by requesting that they put in insulation or plaster to minimize the noise. But it seems that the bar owners didn't want to compromise. Instead, she stated that the bar owners terrorized her by taking the plaster off the wall to make the noise even worse. Ironically, Bender ended up being unlawfully criminally prosecuted. The bar had a reputation for being a cop bar, and cops got involved in the process. She stated that they began by threatening me. Bender said that the cops forced their way into her apartment without reason and told her that she wasn't going to complain about the noise anymore. Within one week, she was arrested, twice, supposedly because she made too many 911 calls. They tried to say that she was crazy and have her committed. During the first arrest, the cops forced their way into her home, took her to Bellevue, and lied. They stated that she made incessant 911 calls and that she was a danger to the community because she was tying up the lines. Bender said that she had hadn't made any 911 calls, but as instructed, used the 311 system to make her noise complaints. She was released from Bellevue within 24 hours and sued the hospital for violation of her due process rights. Bender also stated that the busboy who used to work for the bar informed her that he saw her superintendent go into the bar and talk with the bar owner about getting her arrested. During the third arrest, she was ambushed while going to the grocery store and taken in unmarked cars through different boroughs in an attempt to have her involuntarily committed. The cops attempted another false arrest by getting illegal warrants and raiding her home during the night. The warrants were later adjudicated as without probable cause. Adjudicated means that it was legally ruled by a judge to be without probable cause. There were more arrests, one resulting in the prosecutor making a motion that Bender have a competency hearing because he claimed that she was delusional. The judge, who previously refused the prosecutor's request, suddenly allowed it. In addition, her court-appointed attorney was arrested and was convicted of a fraud charge but got it lowered to a violation. Bender had to find out on her own. During the hearing, she stated that the judge seemed to have predetermined the case despite Bender's legal acumen. The judge had repeated multiple times that if the defendant is found incompetent, then the charges will be dismissed, but that was not the law. The cops wanted the case dismissed so that Bender would not testify about the illegal actions that were taken in her case and what happened would not be on the record. Before the hearing, the judge stated that Bender should make arrangements for her cat and prepare to be processed. In other words, to be indefinitely put into a mental institution. This was in violation of the law because a person would have to be deemed as dangerous to be involuntarily committed. The judge seemed ready to have Bender committed, but she had a group of people there to support her during the hearing, and this seemed to give the judge pause. He decided to reevaluate the case and make a decision at a later time. 
This is not an official gang stalker case, but has many gang stalking elements. Bender's story illustrates some of the things that T.I.'s experience. The news comes from an unconventional source, but there are public documents that support the story. There was a longer version of this interview where Bender explains being harassed by several different cops, and if I remember correctly, some members of the community, as well as a false arrest while she was riding her bike. The story illustrates how a person can be falsely accused of being mentally ill, and if the accuser has connections with authority figures, she or he can have the person committed, despite the law. Bender wasn't mentally ill before being terrorized, but what has happened can definitely induce mental illness. Gang stalking works the same way, by causing traumatizing events that will induce mental illness. Notice the accusation of mental illness came before and during the time that the cops were intimidating, assaulting, and harassing her. Imagine the damage to her reputation by the false arrest and how a rumor of her being mentally ill would be supported by record of her being detained at Bellevue. All the while, she did not commit any crimes. It was the bar owners who may have committed fraud that were being protected by the police. Were the cops protecting criminal behavior instead of stopping it? Why did they choose to terrorize the victim who needed their help? Hmm. The audience members would probably automatically believe the accusers because of their badges, prominent titles, and social backing. Hypothetically speaking, if an acquaintance saw her at Bellevue the day she was detained or somehow found out she was admitted by the police, that acquaintance would most likely believe the rumors or false claims that she may have a mental illness. It is probably difficult and embarrassing for the acquaintance to ask Bender about the Bellevue detainment, and Bender may have difficulty explaining it because of the arrest and other sordid details. So, without the interview, Bender's side of the story may never have been heard. Any audience members whom her accusers approach may never hear Bender's side of the story and just rely on the accuser or the rumors. That's what also happens to TIs during the campaign when gang stalkers approach their family, friends, co-workers, acquaintances, and start to spread misinformation. Most of the time, TIs don't know what is being said and can't clear up any misinformation. Unfortunately, gang stalking has community and criminal administration segments. The criminal administration segment involves the use of gang stalkers to aid the police's attempt to infiltrate criminal activities or to silence those who report corruption within the criminal justice system. On the community level, members of the community or general public gang stalk a person for any reason. Reasons stem from the person just being an easy target, Disputes, rivalries, unwanted neighbors, physical or ethnic differences, plain dislike, etc. Tenani will focus on the community and criminal administration segments because these seem to coincide often and are the most detrimental to society at this point in time. The segments are not distinct and often overlap. The community usually supplies the workforce for the campaign by using influential locals to recruit, follow, harass, and spread misinformation about TIs. The story illustrates the damage that can be done through collaborations between the community and the criminal administration segments. Bender's story also illustrates that gang stalkers who work within the criminal administration system are not above abusing their power to engage in gang stalking activities. The criminal administration system is like any other workplace. There are good workers, average workers, and bad workers. Not all criminal justice employees are bad, but unfortunately, not all of them are good. Because the system's purpose is to protect the community and prosecute criminals, there is a definite obligation to maintain a level of integrity far above the common workplace. Integrity, fairness, truth, and accountability are the basis of the criminal justice system. It gives the criminal justice system credibility and power over the people. People don't have to obey the law. It's a choice that each of us make every day. The criminal justice system is also supposed to deter and punish criminal behavior. But how could it do so when it can't even deter or punish criminal behavior within its own environment? Without integrity, fairness, truth, and accountability, the system fails, and soon the community will have no reason to trust in its actions or judgments. 
An arrest or conviction will mean nothing because there is nothing to back it up. Corruption gradually erodes the criminal justice system's power. The next story comes from San Antonio, Texas. It's called Stalked, Drugged, and Raped. Is it happening in San Antonio? Cynthia Verbeff is moving. Her home, she says, has become a house of horrors. I feel that I've lost my mind, lost my life, Verbeff said. Incident reports from law enforcement tell the tale. Numerous break-ins at the address. She suffered vandalism to her car, motorcycle, and computer. Verbeff believes she is being targeted. Everything. They just went through everything, she said. But sheriff's detectives had little to go on because the vandals, though often destructive, stole nothing. Even from her portable safe drilled into and torn apart, the contents, the jewelry, remained untouched. Verbeff says her troubles didn't start until she met two men. One would become her ex-boyfriend and the other was his partner in a San Antonio pain clinic, Dr. John Hall. Verbeff said, the very first time I met him, we went into his house on the 4th of July, and he told me, because I was already there in the house, that I would be the next victim, that I would be stalked. Verbeff found the doctor's prophecy to be correct. She suffered months of oddness. Lights left on, doors open, furniture moved, her clothes dried, disassembled. Her friends said they noticed the strange happenings. They tell the I team that they even witnessed a gas oven left turned on. Another friend said she and Verbeff were stalked at the mall. Verbeff said all these happenings culminated in an assault. The 39-year-old believes someone drugged the food in her home and returned later to rape her. She filed a report and was briefly hospitalized with signs of sexual assault. Dr. Hall says what Verbeff describes is known as gang stalking. Indeed, he writes about it in his book, A New Breed, Satellite Terrorism in America. Verbeff is not alone. Others in San Antonio have contacted the I-Team and described similar types of occurrences. Linda Johnson says someone poisoned her water supply with heavy metals in northwest San Antonio. Then there's the story of the bracelet that went missing and then reappeared. Police, she says, have stopped listening to her. And like Verbev, she too believes she's been sexually assaulted, although she never filed a police report. Johnson said, I've been to the doctors many times and I've been to the rape center, yes. Many of these so-called victims of what Hall describes as gang stalking meet up on the internet, finding comfort and information from others who say they too suffer from electronic stalking, mind control, and even rape. Loosely defined, gang stalking is where organized groups target and harass unwilling victims to the point of paranoia, leaving the victims to deal with skeptical family members and skeptical law enforcement. This isn't stalking that's done by a former spouse or former boyfriend or someone you know is disgruntled at you, but stalking that's done by a total stranger in an organized fashion, Dr. Hall said. And some internet links take you to the book mentioned earlier, written by Dr. John Hall. The book is fact. It's not a book of fiction. What I've wrote about here is an isolated story in San Antonio, Dr. Hall said. Dr. Hall says it is a story about himself and the harassment and rapes his ex-girlfriends allegedly suffered beginning in 1996. Dr. Hall believes the people behind it are well-organized operatives using government satellite technology to terrorize him and other victims. Verbeth bought the book, and what she read, she says, caused her stomach to turn, because within the chapters in the story, she found similarities to her own situation. Verbeth said, I pulled out the book and I started reading it, and I'm like, oh my god, that's exactly what's happening to me. The account in Hall's book is chilling, and the I-team uncovered some truth in his story. San Antonio police reports indicate that there was a rape reported in 2007 in the same quad of condos where one of Dr. Hall's girlfriends supposedly lived. San Antonio police say the condo rape remains under investigation. And a Bexar County detective say a Rebev's assault case remains open as well. Although there are some interesting connections to Dr. Hall and the book, law enforcement won't and cannot say whether Dr. Hall is even a person of interest. The I-team thought the similarities were striking and asked him if he was in fact bothering these women.
Dr. Hall responded, that's actually one of the reasons why I got out of my ex-fiance's life, to make sure that they weren't victimizing her to get at me. Dr. Hall said he's been targeted by the same group and even by fellow doctors. He said the Texas Medical Board retaliated against him for uncovering the gang stalking. The I-Team confirmed one local hospital suspended Dr. Hall's clinical privileges for two months in 2006. In 2007, the Texas Medical Board ordered two mental evaluations for Dr. Hall. The first came back normal, but a second evaluation found a probable delusional disorder and ordered psychiatric treatment. In 2008, Hall's license was suspended for testing positive for cocaine. In the book, he explains the operatives drugged him with cocaine periodically. Dr. Hall's medical license has since been reinstated. If you look nationwide, almost everyone who complains of this eventually gets sent to a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrists don't look into the technology, don't do any research into whether or not any of this is possible, Dr. Hall said. With his book published, Dr. Hall is taking his message nationally. He appeared on cable TV shows and late night radio, and even has his own radio program in the works. Dr. Hall said, there have been several people in my midst, obviously, that have been victimized. But if you look at it on a larger scale, it is a national problem. Dr. Hall's belief is that we all face some sort of terrorism in our lives that is mostly unseen and deadly. He contends criminals are tapping into our government surveillance system to gain access to our lives and minds. As for the alleged rapes mentioned in the story, no one has been charged. Both San Antonio police and Bexar County Sheriff's deputies say they continue to investigate. This news report highlights the sexual assaults that are involved in gang stalking crimes. I disagree with Dr. Hall that gang stalking only consists of total strangers or is not done by people who the TI knows. Many TIs have reported that people they know have been involved in the campaigns against them. Some law enforcement officials are beginning to realize the seriousness of these crimes, but the crime is growing faster than the effort put into investigations. Unfortunately, for every stalking incident that is recognized, hundreds are ignored or go unreported. Here is a news report from Salinas, California. It's called Gang Stalking, Bullying on Steroids. Police call it Bullying on Steroids. They're referring to gang stalking, and it has nothing to do with the gangs you're probably thinking of. According to the local law enforcement, gang stalking is when multiple people organize to systematically stalk and harass a person, whether emotionally or physically. Lawrence Casino claims his neighbors are gang stalking him because he plays loud music and is outspoken. He said for the last year and a half, he's been systematically followed by a group of people at one point, he said they climbed on his roof to bother him. Gazzino said he's developed a paranoia that's devastated his relationships with his friends and, worst of all, family. It makes me feel afraid. That's the worst part of it. If it was just me, I would take action, he said. Santa Cruz Police Lieutenant Larry Richard said police are becoming more aware of gang stalking because of cyberbullying. But what is gang stalking? Basically, the victim could be driving their car, or talking on their phones, or walking down the street when a group of people try to systematically terrorize them. Richard said gang stalking is nothing new, but new technology is making it more common. Gang stalkers have elevated themselves to technology, but this is something that has been going on before Facebook and Twitter. They just now have gone into those areas, Lieutenant Richard said. Gazzino said he's proof that the problem isn't just online, and it can hit close to home, a home he plans on leaving because of gang stalking. I want to go to the tennis courts or play ping pong without people following us. It's just nerve-wracking, Gazzino said. This story illustrates the point that I made about the previous news report. People who the TI knows sometimes participate in the campaign. In the effort to give the gang stalkers illusion of omnipresence, the perps try to recruit those who they think are close to the TI in order to gather personal information that will help them to terrorize the TI. Please send news reports about stalking or gang stalking that you would like to share to protectlifenow at yahoo.com. Include the paper, the link, date, and the actual article. 
that's it for this episode. I gave you the information, now you decide how to use it. Use what works for you. Campaigns may have the same theme, but could vary in the methods. If you would like to share your stalking story with Tenani, please check out the Protect Life Now's organized harassment video on YouTube or email protectlifenow at yahoo.com for more information. If any gang stalkers disagree with the information presented, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you next time.